Episode 315 of Aussie Tech, Tech Heads is brought to you by the hosting team, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting, all your hosting needs in one place. Cheap, 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 affordable hosting. Go get it while you can. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Lounge. How are you all doing? That's good. It's another week. It's uh, November the 8th, 2012. Another Thursday night. Always live, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live. And uh, you can find us pre-recorded just for by clicking the video off the front page of the website. Or you can go to YouTube or you can hit aussietechheads.com.au forward slash video. So let's get on with the show. We've got a full complement of the hosts tonight. They're all back. So let's start with Will, I think, because he wasn't here last week. So we'll go to Will. How are you doing, Will? How are we? Good, good. What have you been up to? Uh, working and working. And that's, I've literally just walked in the door and I've just, I'm kind of getting everything organized as we go. So. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good to see someone's working hard out there. And uh, and from the uh, Wild West, we've got Shane. Hey, Shane. Hey, how are we? Good, good. What, what, what's uh, what's happening in the Wild Wild West today? Oh, uh, not a lot. Same on same. It's a bit like Groundhog Day, really. I'm still using the, the laptop. Still waiting for my desktop to be fixed or oh. upgraded or whatever have they going to do with it. Have they diagnosed the issue yet? Um, apparently it was RAM again. Um and they swapped the power supply and put one of theirs in and left it over the weekend and it died a couple of times as well. So mm. it's probably going to be motherboard, which means that, you know, upgrade everything because mm. yeah, nothing's compatible. Nasty. And all the way from Sidonie. Eric, how you doing? Hello, sir and gentlemen and Will. How are you? <laughs> Covers everybody. Yes, and uh, what's new with you, Eric? Anything exciting happening down in uh, sunny Sydney? Uh, no, not really. No. Uh, weather's been reasonably good. We had some and, rain here uh, today. Got myself one of these babies. Oh, let's have a look. Oof. Gee, that looks like an iPad mini. Oh, geez, I might. I wonder. <laughs> yes, uh, and what uh, what uh, capacity is that one? Uh, I got. The, I always go for the middle, 32 gig. Nice, nice. Uh, look, yeah, I went the, uh, with the smart cover. You can oh see it just yeah. Oh, nice. You know, look, so, I with my iPad, I, I had a, I didn't have the smart cover, but um, I didn't have the smart cover, but I bought a third party cover, and it, it's obviously uh, why it's third party. Oh, look, the smart cover's okay, but it kept clicking on I'm and off. Actually, hunting, or I'm, I'm going to hunt around for another cover. Yeah, because well, just because the back of it is completely exposed. In yeah. This, it's quite easy to scratch. Yep, yep. Did you buy it from the store or did you get it posted? Well, I had it ordered at one point and um, the cover arrived and I thought, hang on a minute. So I looked at it on the, my order and had a delivery in two weeks. I thought, oh, get real. <laughs> um, I did order it on the day of release. <clears throat> it said two weeks. I ring up uh, Apple Store or, uh, up, up the road here at Hornsby. They said, yeah, we got some. Come down. So I cancelled my order, drove to Hornsby and picked one up. Nice, nice. They had stacks of them. They had, they yeah. had stacks of them. Mm. Well, apparently... Only, it, the, only the pre-orders apparently were sold out. But yeah. the store stock was uh, available. Well, look, as I, I'll tell you, look, I went and had a look in the Apple shop and I saw the, the iPad minis and have a bit of a touch, you know, touchy-feely um, and kissy and licky. And look, it wasn't too bad. It probably changed my mind a bit about it. Uh, and also when I went to, I went to the, the school where the, the young, little young girl goes and the little bloke's going next year and they're going, oh, we've just bought iPads and they took us through the computer room and it's just decked out full of iMacs. And I'm thinking, hmm, an Apple school, hey? <laughs> So, um, yeah, love it. That's yeah, love it. So it looks like that I'll probably be ha having to. Uh, I'll probably get another iPad and just pan my iPad two down. I don't know about the mini. Yeah. I, I, I didn't mind it. it. Look, it felt nice in the hand. It was all right. It was okay. I've changed my mind. All right. Yeah, look, it's all right. Look, I wouldn't use a mini for school. It'd be too small. For mm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as I said, I'll probably hand mine my full uh, iPad two down, and I'll get an iPad. Well, four or yeah. whatever they up to now. I've had four or whatever they are. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And the other thing is I had to uh, get a f replacement um, router from Telstra. Oh, you got one? Because, you know, uh, no, well, I, had, I ordered it today. From the website? <clears throat> uh, well, it said for me because I'm on a bundle, I have to ring them. And, geez, that was, that was pleasurable. <laughs> that always is, isn't oh, it? Telstra. Oh, God. <laughs> so so and when, I, when's that going to arrive? Um, uh, probably Tuesday next week, Wednesday next week. Did, did you and ask for Cisco? Me, yes. She said, first she was, 
just, they don't listen. I said, oh, look, I've got this. This is what's happening, blah, blah, blah. And she goes through the whole, I suppose they have to do this. How many computers are attached to the oh, yeah. to the, to the network that it's got nothing to do with it? Yeah, they go through the it's script. Just, yeah. Yeah, they go through the script. I said, uh, it's got nothing to do with it. Are you wireless? I said, no. Direct plug? I said, yes. How many on the network has got nothing to do with it? <laughs> kept asking me. I said, yeah. darling, I've been doing this for 30 years. It's a shit modem. Get me another one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. She, like, goes, you just she gotta... said, okay, then. So she ordered me a Netgear. I said, no, whoa, 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 whoa. No Netgear. <laughs> oh, pull back. Have you got a Cisco? Mm. I said, I want a Doxus 3 Cisco. No problem. Nice. So that's what, that's Good. What now, um, for put those of you on the uh, video, Eric is going dark. Yeah, like he's I'm got fucking... a, a faulty bulb. Have you got faulty bulbs yeah. down there? No. What is that? <laughs> I don't know. That's just your, your res... Fl- uh, uh, Chrome uh, Hangouts trying to switch it between high def and standard def, and it keeps it keeps flicking between them. If you want to, you can go into configuration and tell it you've got a low speed connection. It'll stop doing that. It's oh, just obviously go. right on that right on that cusp of of switching between high and low. All right. Speaking of dodgy internet. <laughs> <laughs> now we better get into some stories and uh, look and. Let's face it, you're all listening to us because you love the, you want to hear the news, all the tech news that's going on. If you want to get the tech news in your Twitter, go to, uh, just follow at Aussie Tech News and we'll, we'll pop a couple of little stories in there every half an hour. Nothing too, nothing too overwhelming and, and we'll do that. All right, so let's start. I'll look, I'll start. Let's, um, let's start with this one. Microsoft, as we mentioned probably a couple of weeks ago, uh, we didn't see that the, the, Scott, the Microsoft Messenger was going to last too much longer. And now it looks like it's had its day. Microsoft. That's right. We're all very sad. Microsoft currently has a (laughs) hundred. Thanks. Microsoft currently has a hundred million messenger users. And they'll be merged into, oh God, that's going to crash. And they'll be merged into Skype's user base of around 280 million. According to That's why we don't use it anymore. <laughs> Messenger will be how's that? So it's gonna be merged into Skype's user base. So a hundred million, it's going to be three hundred and eighty million people on Skype. It's gonna be a disaster. Because what happens with the people that have got a Skype yeah, and but, a Messenger thing? No, but hang on, a lot of those will be crossover accounts. There won't necessarily be a hundred mm, million probably. users more. There might be ten million users more. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because a lot of people have got Skype and Messenger accounts times ten. But is that, there's going to be 380 million accounts. And, and, well, and, no, because they'll be merged into not, the same but account. But not all of so them. Yeah, but not all if of you've them. already got a Skype account and a Messenger account, they'll just merge together. So but how are, they going to know, how are they going to know if it's the same account, if it belongs to the same? Because you just account. enter your details and it'll say, welcome to Messenger. I mean, you've been able to use Messenger in Skype for quite a while, so a lot of people have already got it set up. Oh, anyway. okay, right. Yeah. Look, I've never, ever used Messenger, eh? Never, ever. Even oh, I knew it in about 1998. Yeah, I was going to say about 10 years yeah. ago. Oh, look, yeah, yeah. I, I loaded it up and then deleted it as fast as it got on there. Yeah, Messenger, ICQ. Yeah. Uh, what was the other one at the time? AOL, instant messaging. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, I used ICQ for a while. That was all right. It's still going. It's still getting around the traps. Yeah. Yeah. Some people still use that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Enough. Uh, so, Messenger will be retired in the first quarter of next year in all countries except China. So, uh, of yeah, course, of course, Microsoft That's Skype doesn't work. <laughs> now, if you remember, Microsoft, uh, scoff, <laughs> Microsoft, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Microsoft, <laughs> they bought, they bought Skype, uh, right about a year ago, eight point five US billion. So uh, that's a yeah. lot. Gee, Scott, of time. Yeah, but before that, Skype must have made so much money because they sold it to eBay, but eBay actually forgot to buy. The software they just bought the rights to Skype. They bought. They forgot to buy the intellectual property. Didn't cover yeah. the purchase. <laughs> so oh. eBay paid, worse than that. They paid twelve billion and sold it for eight. So they lost money yeah. on a product that they didn't really own in the first place. <laughs> so so Skype's four billion up to start with, and then Microsoft goes, "Hey, we want to buy it from you." They're like, "Go for it, dude! Seriously." <laughs> How many more times are we going to are we going to sell this sucker? <laughs> Oh, it's going around. And uh, now there's also been unveiled that uh, Skype 6 for Windows and Mac is going to be released. Is the Mac up to 6? It's already up? out. It's already out. I've already got it. Oh, two weeks ago it was unveiled. Skype 6 for both yeah, Windows I've and already, Mac. I've got, I've got both of them running now. 
Did they? they're, they're garbage. It just adds well, every five update. seconds. You don't really have a choice. The force is updated, so. Oh, so it's just ad ridden now, is it? Oh, it's ad. It's hideous. Yeah, I can. I actually can't. If I say um, load on start, like when Windows starts, it actually won't load, but it takes about two gig of RAM. Yeah, well done. Yeah, right. And <laughs> the funny thing is, um, apparently on the iPhones now, they're telling everybody to take Skype off because it, that's yes. what's running the, everyone's battery down. So well done, Microsoft. You've done a fantastic job once no, again. No, but that, that, that's a they smart... They don't know how to write software. They're crap. No, you don't, you, you're looking at it from the wrong angle. That's a very smart move from Microsoft because now the Windows phones are going to have a be better battery <laughs> than the iPhone. Well, that's a fake better battery until they start loading up their own product, Skype, and then They'll they, improve they leave it. the door, go to the car, and battery's dead. <laughs> yeah. Now, new, new users... Can, uh, can expect support for all platforms, including iPad, Android, video calling on mobile phones with both groups and Facebook friends, instant messaging and screen no, sharing. No, it can't. It doesn't work on phones. <laughs> <laughs> Not on their phone. <laughs> no. Well, anyway. Now, I mean, you know the big thing, actually, this is quite interesting. Years ago, like, what, four years ago? It's just about every... I found my old Nokia E73 thing too, by the way, E63. Um, just about every phone had a front-facing camera and everyone goes oh what do you want to use this for nobody's going to use that so they took all the front cameras off and only put back yeah. facing cameras and everyone's like oh i haven't got a front-facing camera <laughs> oh dear yeah well done yeah oh well but anyway so hang on, um, hang on. well done that's only because when it first came out the um phone carriers used to charge a fortune for the video calls yeah well, that was one cool thing about three <laughs> When they had like the Nokia um, N95 and stuff like that, they had a front-facing camera, and they had video chat, and it was in court. It was like virtually free from three to three. Yeah, times. it was. Yeah, I remember that. It was that's about six or seven years ago, and it, and it came. It was really it was part well. of your cap. Yeah, and it worked really well. Like it was really reliable. And it was really good quality video, and it was until, free. They, until everyone started getting on it. <laughs> until they merged and it went to shit. But you know, like it's just amazing that. The technology was around five or six years ago and then actually went away for a couple of years. And now the software wasn't very good. <laughs> Until mm. now, uh, which is going to be worse. Yeah, we'll yeah. Yeah. But it's okay. We've got the data now. We've, so everybody will f go to 4G and then nah. crack we'll we'll the FaceTime network. <laughs> Steve well, Bomb I, 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 I had a Skype call with Glenn. Remember Glenn in from the car in, on my iPhone? That was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that was all right. Well, well, it wasn't Great. video, though. Yeah, was it was video, it? remember? Was I was in the car. Oh, that's right. And yes, I was showing yes. you That's right. And I was showing you where I was. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that was all right. Yeah. Look, I think I think yeah. Skype works okay. Um, but I think uh, as I, I was discussing with Shane through the week, there um, you know, how how you can load up two versions of Skype on the same computer if you wanted to, you know, get two yeah. sort of yep. two separate calls going, but um I I'm not too keen on the hacks, but uh yeah, that's the hack I told you about, wasn't it? There's a little yeah. app you can use that'll do it. Oh, okay. Well, is it is it just, just a little one click one click app? Basically, it's the same as running uh, Skype slash um, secondary. Secondary, yeah, it's the same thing, but mm. it's a little app that does it and it automatically logs you in, logs you into one account, opens up the other one, logs in the other account. Right. Okay. But anyway, but it, I think Hangout is going pretty good. I think. Um, and oh, for now. Well, Skype yeah. groups, you got to pay for that now, haven't you? Group calls, you got to be. It's, a, it's funny though. Skype's getting. Um, Hangouts getting better and Skype's getting worse. Yeah, mm. because this time because everyone's moving across to Hangout because Skype's so bad. So it's time to go back to Skype because there's no one using it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, this time last year, remember we? This is probably about get, when we started yeah, using. Right. We couldn't get Hangout. It was hopeless. Yeah, and yeah. we're having so many problems with it, you know. And now, it's that's what primarily what we use. So yeah. Well, well, until the next one comes along, I don't know what that'll be called. So um, I think, uh, Shane, you pulled out a, a couple of lines about Skype as well this week. Uh, yeah, the um, yeah, good follow-on story. The, where is it? VoIP and instant messaging problems looming. Skype doesn't support IPv6. Yes. Yeah, so uh, which is going to be, <laughs> that's going to be a bit of an issue. <laughs> well done, Microsoft. Yeah. You're all legends. But it's obviously yeah. something that they'll fix in time, you would imagine. Well, I mean... Well, we're talking about uh, FaceTime a second ago too, and 
um, Apple's been ordered to pay $368 million to a patent holding company, Vernex, after a Texas court found that they Apple infringed on four of the company's patents. Mm. So, um, so yeah. So, Apple, even though they are using FaceTime... Uh, are they guess, appealing it? Are they appealing it? They or lost the appeal. Was, well, that was lost the appeal, okay. They lost the appeal, yep. Um, they're intending to fight it and taking it to the next level up. But the judge said, you can, but, you know, if you want to waste more money, go for it. Now, with, um, yeah, because Apple's a real, real skint at the moment. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I don't know, uh, Will, if you're able to give us any uh, help with IPv6, but do you have do you need uh, special DNS, IP6 DNSs? I, IP6, uh, for, for the average end user like you and me, we won't really see IP6. We'll continue to use IPv4. Um, and you automatically know, your route. Your 192.168.10.1, for example, we'll continue to use those unless you have a network of, you know, maybe 10,000 computers, you might want to think about changing it. But basically all the back ends, and the, most of them have already started implementing it, the back ends, uh, exchanges, all your major servers like your Skype, your live stream, your, you know, um, Gmail servers, Google.com, they're all switching to IPv6, which Skype's not. ups... Which no. <laughs> yeah, which basically, um, uh, basically, what happened is we've run out of the dotted quads. We've we've used all the ones we can use. So I can't remember off the top of my head how many numbers that is, but you know, you, you can go to two five six dot two five six dot two five six dot two five six. So mm. all the way from zero 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 up to two five six. Um, so we've filled that range. They're no longer available. So what they've done is they basically added more numbers to that configuration. Um, what that means for people that want to implement it is you need to, for the most part, anyway, unless you have fairly recent hardware, sorry, EPA, you're correct, it's 255, not 256. Yes. Um, yeah, for the most part, you need to get new routers, you need to have new, well, you don't, you know, all your DNS have all have to be reassigned, mm. everything, I mean, we're not really going to see anything change, but all the back ends have to all be reconfigured. And in the long run, it's probably a good thing. It'll probably end up being, you know, a, a better and more reliable system. You mm. know, but well, uh, I, the only reason I ask is because I think I, I was just browsing around my router as you do the other day, and uh, I'm pretty sure I saw the IPv6, uh, yeah. you know, uh, boxes for me to fill out if I if I so wished, but I didn't yeah. wish. So I moved on. You've got a fairly new router within mm. you know, 12 months or so, haven't you? So, yeah. yeah. A lot of the new stuff will do it. Um, so I think what will happen is that... You don't that, need to worry about it. Yeah, like if, you, yeah, if you're going to hit a site that's, uh, that's going to be V6, then it'll automatically just go there. You're not, you're not going to not be able to go there. It'll, just, it'll still handle it. It'll still do it. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, you won't know any difference. That's and right. a lot of the old IPv4 stuff will probably still work. Um, you know, yeah, you can still go to well, they're only addresses. set up and already assigned. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, they're only addresses. Um, and, and actually, PA has just in the chat room um, has put up the IPv6 address. Now, basically, quickly, a DNS server, what it does is it takes a word like google.com and it's smart enough to hit the server and server goes, oh, google.com, hang on, let me look that up. And that is 2404... Dot six eight double o dot four double o six dot dot o four colon one thousand. So it the DNS server takes a word and yep. puts it into a number. Now you can type that number in the two four o four six eight double o four double o six eight o four, and you will go to Google dot com. Hmm. So that's basically the difference. They've just added more numbers to yep. the old IP address. Yeah. Good stuff. Good, good, good explanation, Will. Thank you. Now, um, look, we're going to uh, go and do some more stories. We're going to go and do an Apple story because I know Eric's got a couple of Apple stories. Did you want to start Just with a couple? The, did you want to start with an Apple story, Eric? Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do one. I'll do one. What do you What do you got? What have I got? <coughs> unlocked iPhones arrive at Dick Smith. Yes. But should you buy one unlocked? Now, this is I wouldn't because number one, they're only selling the iPhone for and the iPhone 4S unlocked from Dick Smith. Obviously, you can get it unlocked from um, Apple. But then you've got to go and buy a plan anyway. 
Mm. So in the end, we've done the maths on this before. For example, my current iPhone 5 is an extra $11 a month times um, 24 months, which is, comes in at about $264 mm. for the phone. Whereas if you went and bought one outright, you're going to pay up to $1,000. Yes. For a 64 gig. Yep. And you're going to pay $60 a month anyway. Yes. Yes. For if you're going with Telstra. That's their lowest plan for an iPhone 5. Mm. So I thought, well, I'm just paying $60 a month plus 11 rather than $60 a month plus 1000 bucks over 24 months. That's right. Which is, you know, $35 a month. Mm. So do your mathematics, people, before you go and buy one unlocked. So who, who would mm. be suited to, to buying a... An unlocked prepaid, probably prepaid. If you were gonna, if they were a reasonable price, like a four would probably, you'd probably get a four for about three hundred and fifty, four hundred dollars. Now, what wasn't and if it? You got a prepaid. Yeah, wasn't it at uh, at the iPhone five launch that Apple said that the four and the four S would become zero dollars on a plan? But I haven't uh, actually seen any of those. Yeah, that's only in America, not necessarily oh, here. Okay, right, right. Well, this could be the start of it. So um, could be. Um, but if you're a prepaid and you get your kids, you know, a 180-day prepaid SIM that for about a hundred bucks, mm. um, you know, that might be worth it. Yep. But you can't buy these phones online. They're at the store only, from Dick Smith. Yeah, they want the foot. They want the foot traffic. Yeah. Because when you're there, you can get a twenty-dollar made in China digital set-top box, <laughs> or a couple of cables, or a, you know, a hundred buck uh, HDMI cable, which they say you have to have. Or you could go. Um, or you yeah. go Go for something really flash and, and buy a little uh, um, uh, old stock Tandy product. Yes, there you go. <laughs> you They're that. in the back corner of the ones gathering dust. <laughs> yes, that's right. Now, look, I've got a... Actually, I went, there is... Uh, Dick Smith actually has at certain stores that only have stock of them. If you are interested in a UPS, um, which is an uninterruptible power supply, basically the idea is if the power goes down or you get a power surge, it gives you... On backup batteries gives you a few minutes to shut your system down before you lose all your data. Uh, Dick Smith has new old stock of a UPS which is powerful enough to run two computers. They're selling them out for about 45 or 50 bucks if you can find them. The only catch is you need to replace the batteries because they've been sitting on the shelf for two years. <laughs> but <Nice. laughs> but if you go if you go to Dick Smith and buy the batteries, they're 75 dollars each. If you actually go somewhere that isn't Dick Smith and buy exactly the same batteries, they're twelve dollars each. Can you buy the batteries from oh, really? Me? Do you yeah, sell you the batteries? Yeah, oh there you go. <laughs> when are you get in the web page, Will? When you get when you get in the Will's battery um, web page? Well, at the moment you can go to batterycentral.com. <laughs> Will um, Will's uh, still con go through there. I, I Will's yeah, conflict of conflict interest of battery web page. <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Will's Will's I'm gonna get my, my ass suit off me. Dot com. And sacked. All right. Um, so, okay. So I've got a, You're probably not in that order, though. <laughs> I've got a couple of little <laughs> Apple stories as well. Apple purges hundreds of Aussie resellers. So this is not probably a, a good story for the resellers. Apple has terminated contracts with up to 200 Australian resellers in the last four months with no explanation. So now this was uh, revealed by the CRN news site. Apple now has around 500 local resellers on its books from approximately 700 in June. So that's just a, that's, that works out to be a cull of just under 30%. One re run reseller has been in partnership with Apple for just over a year selling iMacs, MacBook Pros. It said it did not sell iPads or iPhones as it declined to bend to, be, declined to, bend to Apple's strict standards for selling the mobile devices. So, well, yeah. yes, any comments, any comments on why Apple could be uh, dumping... Resellers, that apparently one of the. Can. Well, that's true. Look, I've got no. I've got. Yeah, I've got no. I've got no issues with that actually. Like, um, it's Apple's product; they do what they want. Like, I've got no issues at all. None, Apple none at all. is known for destroying their customer base and making a profit from it. Mm. No. <laughs> well, they're uh, not. No, they're not. They do. They alienate. They alienate their consistent, customer base. It's about consistent branding. Mm. And if some of the stores are getting culled, it's because they're not giving the, the right message, the, the right Apple message. Mm. Just like a McDonald's franchise can be taken away from you, if you start running it down into the ground, they will take it off you. Well, one that's of the, what they do with the Apple franchise. One of the resellers said that Apple ended the partnership with no warning after it claimed sales targets had been missed. 
So, look, that could be a bit harsh. But at the end of the day, uh, that's Apple stuff. If they want to sell it to the reseller, they sell it. If they don't, they don't. Like, it's, it's completely up to exactly. them. Exactly. You know, it's, but, I mean, look, it happens with Apple. Amazon um, had a thing with Kindle for a while where if they found, you know, if they decided that they wanted to, they could just delete all your books off your Kindle because you don't buy a book. You buy the rights to read a book. And That's if right. they decide that you've done something wrong, they can reach into your Kindle and delete it. Or they can reach into your account and they can delete it. You know, so it's it's not just Apple doing it. I think we just hear about it more. But there are a lot of companies out there, whether or not you agree with what they're doing, they're getting quite easily getting away with it. Mm. You know? And not only that, you've got to remember too, a lot of these um, conditions are in the documents that you sign. Oh, that's right. That's right. And with Apple. We're... So you, it's not as if you're, uh, you know... Yeah, sure, it might be uh, unexpected, but it's not um, um, what you call it. It's not untoward because mm. yeah, that's what you sign. Yeah, and look, it's probably there's probably little parts in the contract as well, which says that you know the Apple products might have to be in the window, or you know, like seventy percent of the window, or something like that. So there's probably a lot of little ins and outs and ups and downs, and obviously the retail the resellers have um, failed on a few of those little points. But uh, but sticking with Apple for a sec. I don't know if you guys saw this one, but Apple, this is just a report, but Apple may ditch the Intel chips in Macs. So it looks like we're going around yeah. again. I saw that. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually, to be honest, I'm surprised they've continued to use them for so long, realistically. Um, they have their own backbone set up for hardware. I'm surprised they don't want to, you know. So it's intending to swap out Intel chips with the, R, the ARM-based chip it designs internally for the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, this is a report from Bloomberg. Apple engineers have reportedly grown confident that their processors will be powerful enough to fuel Mac desktops and notebooks. So apparently they want to integrate a more seamless integration between the Apple family. Um, yeah, so it's seven years since Apple has uh, been linked with Intel. So does this mean, once again, that if they start, this is not gonna happen like overnight, this is, um, Apple's decision to to uh, you, uh, where do I say here to create a center blah 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 a goal that is easy to achieve well, it doesn't actually say a time frame but it's not going to happen overnight but uh, in a few years I think it says yeah another few years but does this mean once again that the stuff on the new Max will not work on the Intel Max we're gonna Probably. we're gonna well, see that's a good question because they didn't work when I went to Intel they didn't work on the old Motorola chip so. No. Who knows? They, they, I've, I've heard that they're going to put like a like a conversion program in there called the Rosetta or a oh, okay. Rosetta type thing. Right, right. Because um, when they had, um, what you call it? Didn't they go from um, PowerPCs or something? Yeah, from PowerPCs to Intel, you could run a particular program and yeah, for a period of time and I don't know. But they'll, they'll do something. It'll mm. Look, I'm not, I'm not in favour of it. I like the Intel chips. Yeah, but but how? But wouldn't it? As they said, they want a more seamless integration between the the i devices and the desktop device. So do you think that? Yeah, but, but what's it going to do if you got just because you got the same chip? How is that going to make a difference? No, no, I think it's pretty seamless now. Like thing, exactly. You know? How much more seamless do you want it to be? <laughs> That's right. Well, but you put your to the you put a phone in your back pocket and you pull out a laptop. <laughs> is that what they want? It'll get to the point where you're actually running the same actual software. Because if they're yeah. both running the ARM chips, well, okay, that, that's three, what I, yeah, exactly. Mm. There'll be three configurations. There'll be the small screen, a medium screen, and a large screen. But you basically, it will be exactly the same bit of software. So if you're doing something on one, I mean, the same thing you've been able to do in, you know, like in Google and stuff like that. It doesn't matter what device you're on, you have well, Windows, access to Windows the same. Windows Surface, um, Windows 8 um, Pro right. for the it's Surface, for example, that, same, yeah. same deal. Now, um, now, Shane, you had a little iPhone 5 issue, I think. Uh -huh. You had a little iPhone 5, <laughs> <laughs> little iPhone 5 issue that uh, popped its head up through the week. Stringent. Let me have a look. The production specifications. <coughs> that... Oh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> ah, shush. Sorry. I thought you meant me personally. No. Um, yeah, basically. You were, uh, you're a little bit distorted at my end, Shane. Yes, you're a little uh, bit loud. You could uh, that's good. turn back down. Sorry, I asked, asked Shane to turn up at the start of the show, but it seems Google must have been the hangout and it's righted itself, and now Shane's bleeding. You need a band aid for Is that. that better? Bleeding. <laughs> Is that better? A little bit. Go again. 
And now, is that better? No, lower. Low. And now, let's try that. Remember? Try that. All right, we'll go there. Push the mic away a little bit, maybe. How's that? Good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, where are we? Uh, so yeah, yeah. So long story short, to do with um, design specifications and um, just the and a combination of how much they're selling. Uh, Voxcon is saying that they're struggling to um, keep up with demand and um, having issues with the quality control and all that sort of stuff, just because of um, just the different different design and the and the quality that um, Apple wants, similar to obviously what we've just been talking about with regard to their um, rules around their resellers and that. Obviously, Apple have got such a tight control on the product that gets pushed out. Um, Foxconn can't kind of keep up with it. So it looks like there could be a little bit of a short supply coming up, but uh, look, don't sweat. Don't sweat on anything like that because I saw today the iPhone 6 rumour for the 8th of November. (laughs) It started. It has started. And apparently, look, look, I'm not not going to bang on about this every week, I'll tell you now, but uh, apparently it's going to be launched, released, whatever, June next year. There you go. Well, that's when they launch it every year. Yeah, but another one, iPhone 6. What are, yeah. ah, it's one a year. <laughs> There's a surprise. Who would have thought they're going to release another one? I mean, oh, no. oh, well, hang on a minute. It's, it's like the iPad. They released one in 2007 and then 8 and then 9 <laughs> it's and like then 10 the iPad and 11, Mini. 12. Oh, my God, one a year. What a surprise. <laughs> the iPad Mini is going to be the same. The next one's going to have the retina display or at least a a super high-res display, you know, it'll That's probably right. have a slightly bigger processor. I mean... They've, and it'll come out in six months, which is still next year, one, yeah. one a year. That's right, you know, and yeah, it's... The only people that seem to be surprised by this are the people who Just have bought one. Apple devices. <laughs> the ones that, yeah, the ones, the only ones that are surprised are the ones people who buy Windows products, Glenn. No, the only ones that are surprised, <laughs> I don't want an iPhone 6 to come out because then mine's going to be obsolete, so... <laughs> I want to, no. I want to... So it doesn't matter. No, I know, matter. but... I know, but, you know... I want the latest and greatest. You know what it's like. Oh, you're such a bloody... You know what it's like. And uh, so, oh, it's, it's uh, birthday time. Did you know? <laughs> There's birthday wishes all around. Android, fifth birthday. On November 5th, 2007, Android was officially announced, uh, although at that point in time, the SDK wasn't made available until the 12th of November. So there you go, Android. But when, when was it official that they stole this idea from Apple? What's the birthday of that? Probably when was the iPhone 3 launched? iPhones. <laughs> iPhone 3? Oh, hang on, who yeah. stole it from who? <laughs> well, you know, who, who, uh, how far back do you want to go to have to have a touchscreen interface operating system? We're talking like Palm Pilots or... Yeah, touch, but, but they didn't have a touch. They had a pen. They, there was still touchscreen. Doesn't matter. It wasn't finger. It wasn't mine. Hang on, I, I had a... Different had patent. A I had a Nokia that uh, didn't require a stylus, and I had a Windows Five, Windows Mobile Five or whatever it is, phone that didn't require a stylus. Yeah, but it was Apple that blew the lid off everything. It wasn't multi. It wasn't multi. It wasn't multi. It was actually. You put four fingers Not, on it. Uh, three. You put your I foot think. on it because it I didn't think it work. Worked up to th- up to three fingers. It wasn't true multi-touch. Right, but it was. I'll give you two fingers right now, Will. <laughs> <laughs> I've oh. seen them. <laughs> All right, uh, Will. Did you did you have any stories, Will? That... Yeah, so there's a really neat uh, uh, Google Chrome extension that was released today, and I'm literally just trying it out now. I haven't actually tried it until right now, um, and I'll quickly share my screen with you and show you what I'm looking at. Uh, oh, prepare for what... the crash. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, and prepare for reboot. It is, um, it's an app. Well, you can go to the, the Chrome store, and it's called uh, Media Hint. And you can read the description of it. Basically, everybody knows Hulu. You'll notice I'm actually on the Hulu website here. Um, and what it does is it allows you to play uh, Hulu, among other websites, in this country. Now, what? I'm playing Night Rider at the moment, which I know is... Um, what's it called, is blocked here normally um, because I've tried to watch it on Hulu before and because I can't, I watch it other ways. But with this app, uh, it's just simply lets you go to the website and 
so lets you watch any anything that's for free, or you can even try the uh, Hulu Plus and pay for movies and whatever, and watch them watch them here. So yeah, nice. Now uh, I've uh, talking about those sort of things. I've got something here. Hang on, I just can't remember what just it was. Just so people are in, in case that they missed it the first time. It's called Media Hint. M e d i a h i n t. You might have heard me talk about Quick Flicks as well. I signed up for it. Um, I de-signed because it was uh, <laughs> it, it, it just didn't do anything for me. I signed up with them for the, for the thirty day trial. Yeah, they got nothing. Didn't watch the DVD that I got, so I put. Up. Yeah, look, I didn't even. I don't want the DVDs. I signed up for it to download online and watch on like stream, but they had nothing. They had nothing like like I I I think I tried about five movies, and admittedly they're they're late release movies. Um, no. Nah. You couldn't. There's a different catalogue for DVDs and a different catalogue for the thing. But anyway, I de-signed. But anyway, that's that's beside the point. Um, all right, what else have we got going on here? Anything else? Um, Shane, do you have any? Well, 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 oh, while we're Eric? on the subject of Hulu type thingies, yeah, I just discovered this today, and look, everyone might already know about this, but apparently now you can watch Foxtel on your iPad if you've got yeah, a subscription. Right. Do you know? It? Yeah, I it's saw that. Yeah. Foxtel Go. For, for right go, so, yeah. so you type in your uh, account details, you log in using your account details that Foxtel will give you because you've got an account with them yeah. at home, and you can watch up to 21 channels on your iPad uh, over, with, and you don't have to be on um, on wireless to do it. Right. And no extra cost. So go to the iTunes store down and search for Foxtel Go and uh, download it on your iPad or your iPhone. Or is it just iPad? No, I think it's just iPad. There's no, uh, there's no hints of it being uh, um, uh, f- uh, unmetered because it's half Telstra. Um, well, if you're with Telstra on your um, on your iPad, it might be unmetered. I'm not sure. It's something that you might have to ask them about. Yeah. So you, yeah, you wouldn't. But is it is it unmeted on the Xbox? <coughs> I yeah, I'm unmeted on a Telstra. On. Like I can watch Foxtel on my phone, and it's unmeted. But I mean, you pay for the Foxtel, but yeah, the, you pay for the, the download's Foxtel. unmeted. Yeah. So this Foxtel. might be the similar because you're already paying for the Foxtel mm. at home. Yeah. And it might be unmeted um, on the T box. It's unmeted. I know that. Yes, T box definitely. Uh, the Lifestyle Channel A and E. Oh, who watches Storage Wars? Isn't that a good show? Sky News, yep. <laughs> National Geographic, watch American Pictures. Yeah, that's all right too. Yeah, so look, there's 21 channels, Eric. That's all right. So is yeah, that is, bad. is that something you're going to get yourself into? Well, I downloaded it, but I can't remember my account number, so I'm going to ring them tomorrow. Um, mm. But it works well because on on the, on the front screen before you um, sign in, it automatically shows Sky News. Right. Right. Yep. And it's uh, and it's quite nice and it's good res- resolution, no lag, uh, HD. So it's it's not bad. You know when uh, when uh, you know when uh, ABC Twenty Four come out, I thought that Sky News was going to uh, fall in popularity or whatever. You know, people would want to watch the free one rather than the Sky News. But to tell you the truth, uh, Sky News is just a bit better, <laughs> I think, because I think there's better programming on the Sky News. You've got your board and every yeah. It what, is. ABC News is very um. Let's uh, let's put it nicely. It's um okay. It's communist. All right, there you go. I said it. Right. Well, I just find that the, the programming was just, uh, it's more it's more shows and, and stuff that really wasn't what I was after in a news channel. Look, I watch it if there's nothing else. I look, I like The Drum. That's a good little show they've got going. But uh, other than that, yeah. Other, oh, yeah, I don't know. Like, what's that guy that gets on the Sky Channel, on the Sky News? Uh, I forget his name now, but I watch him. He's on about 9 o'clock every night. And there's Richo. Richo gets on there. You'd love Richo, wouldn't you, Eric? Graham. I don't mind Richo. He's quite objective, actually. He's got better since he since he quit. Yeah, yeah. well, now he's getting paid by a liberal channel. Well, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm just still looking at your little life, your little uh, Foxtel story. Uh, it just says uh, that uh, isn't uh, your iPad will need to be iOS five or higher. You can use two iPads <laughs> with Foxtel. You can use two iPads with Foxtel Go on the one I'm account. account. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Naturally, the ability it'll actually it does the same thing that like Audible does, for example. It does a hot sync between them. So if you stop halfway through a show on one, you can continue off okay. to the same spot on the other one. Now this also works with the IQ and MyStar. 
uh, you are a little lost star viewers, looks like you're also included. And you can use 3G, 4G or Wi-Fi to access Foxtel Go, but video quality will depend very on your bandwidth. So does that mean that, say, you, you do your Foxtel Go, so then, therefore, you can watch something on the IQ and you could potentially be watching another two channels at the same time on your iPads? Is that, a, is yeah. that how I'm reading it? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I don't yeah. know if you can... Or is it only yeah, recorded? Yeah, I don't know if you can use both the iPads at the same time. Right. Right. That well, might I'll find be, that out. May be a limit. Yeah. yeah, well, that might, that, I'm, I mean, you may be able to, but I was just thinking that might be a limitation because I know at least a while ago when they had that online... I'd, I'd be happy just to watch it on one iPad. You don't have to put up with the crap I have to watch that. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Now, you're, uh, Eric, you've also got another little Netflix story here that will go probably well with what we're talking about. Have I? What will next? What's that? <laughs> uh, what net, that? Netflix, <laughs> Netflix gobbles a third of peak internet traffic. Oh, yes. That one. Yeah, oh, that's quite yeah. an amazing statistic. So peak time will be what time? From uh, 9 p.m. to 12 a.m.? That's their peak? Gee, they're watching telly late. <laughs> um, according to this statistic, Netflix was just what clicked Quick Flix here was trying to emulate, which and failed miserably. Mm. So that's why I can't wait for Netflix to actually come to Sydney. That'd be great. Uh, <clears throat> one third of all peak time internet traffic in North America, which is effectively the United States, um, was Netflix. So I wonder is you've got your neighbours all watching Netflix, you say a third of your street mm. watching Netflix. I wonder if, what degradation you would have in. Um, and you bandwidth. Yeah. It depends on which end of the street you're at, I suppose. Well, that's right. They're all at one end. Yeah. And you're at the other, you'll be sweet. But <clears throat> if it's evenly spaced out, because, you know, normal cable, because cable's a shared network. Yeah. So everyone on my street now who's on um, Telstra, if they're on it now, that's going to affect me, even if they're up the street. Yeah. Because they're all coming off the same box. Now, if everyone got on Netflix, I wonder but whether you know, suddenly it'd switch to a standard definition. Yeah, but, but I mean, like, look, I'm not too exactly sure how the whole thing works. But, but say, you know, like you, you've, got, you've got an ADSL connection. You can stream a movie, okay? If you've got a decent ADSL connection, say you've got about seven meg down, you can stream. Eventually. Yeah, you can stream a, uh, <laughs> a, a movie. So, so, like, you know, our cable now on, on Telstra Cable, you, you can reliably get about 100 meg down. So does that mean that that's 100 meg available to your node or to your street or, or is well, it theoretically that's to your that's to your um your actual modem theoretically yeah, that's right um, so if you've got if you've got 10 people in a street or they can all get 100 megs but if they're all at the same time it might drop to 50 well but that won't be a limitation of the cable that will be a limitation of the exchange because the way the cable actually works is it actually does frequency sharing there's Several, you know, I don't know how many exactly frequency ranges there are, but every modem uses a different frequency, which is why when there's uh, Optus yep. TV, for example, all the TV stations have their own frequency, and then when you put the splitter on the wall, it's between, off the top of my head, I think it's between uh, 12,000 and 22,000 hertz is the frequency for the the uh, Optus TV. So you, even though, yes, you are sharing a common cable, you're being carried on a separate part of that. So yeah, but it, but it is true that if if the if the whole street is is pumping with uh, watch, watch, watching their internet, then you will see a, a, a degradation of your speed. Yeah, it just it just goes. To sh we just don't know how much. Yeah, well, we don't yeah, know how I much mean, it, is actually in the it exchange. Won't be as I said though, it probably won't be at the on the cable. It will be at the exchange. Will be yeah, yeah. at the exchange. That's right. Yeah. Not the modem doesn't suffer because that's mm. always. Um, opened up to 100 meg. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. That's... What the, the throughput from the exchange is what suffers. Mm. But see, theoretically, too, once the NBN comes around, and the exchanges See, are that's obviously upgraded. That's right. The, well, once the exchanges are upgraded to the NBN, even if I stay on cable, by rights, I should get better speed because the exchange is less likely to be the bottleneck. That's true. But if you're on NBN, it won't be a bottleneck anyway because it's the direct to your home. Well, the backbone will be well, the yeah, bottleneck. Like, you're, by, you're, you're bypassing the um, the box. Yeah, but it's still an exchange. You, you, you're always going to have an exchange bottleneck somewhere. I mean, at, 
Well, the, the, theoretically, you won't. But yeah, probably will. Well, <laughs> but it'll be data well, that yeah. comes in from the the US. The overseas cable will be will become the the bottleneck. Yeah, but you still have to have the provider. Still has to has has to have exchanges. So there still has to be a distribution system mm. somewhere. Yep. All right, now, uh, and just continuing with that with that flavour, I think, Shane, did you have another little t- watch TV on your tablet? Uh, yeah, basically cool. there's a new device that's coming out. Um, the Belkin, um, Belkin have brought out a device where it just connects to your um, set-top box and you can then stream or watch TV on, uh, watch whatever your TV is watching on um, a number of devices. Uh, it comes out on the iPad, um, I don't think it's available on Android or anything. It's available on the iPad. Um, the iPad app is free, but if you want to download it on your iPhone, you've got to pay $12.99 for some strange reason. Um, they do go on to say that it's only... Uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they go on to say that it's um, only standard definition. Um, the test runs that they have uh, they did was using, like, their, their they had their um, Foxtel plugged into their TV, so they're watching that. Um, it was a bit jerky and a bit, you know, it kind of froze and wasn't that great quality. Um, that'll get that'll guess, improve. Yeah, probably. I guess the it's probably the closest thing that we'll get to. Um, oh, what's that thing in America? Slingbox. Oh, Slingbox. Yes. Yep. Well, I was about to say, I wonder if it's any relation of Slingbox because Slingbox just released a USB dongle as well. So uh, I wonder if it's sort of the same technology as that. So this dongle apparently uh, you can you can tape something on your iPad. You can like as it's streaming to the iPad, you can actually record it to the iPad and watch that again later. So that's that's oh, yeah. all right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's good. All right. Now we're just going to have a bit of a bit of a break because we're going to hear from uh, Garthy Boy Garth's back with another another review this week. So let's hope that we've we've queued him up properly. <laughs> And see how we go. So, Garth, there you go. Zillo. Oh, I haven't given it away, have I? No, it's... Uh... <laughs> oh, oh, that was terrible. <laughs> it's, but um... it is called Zello. What do you got, Garth? It is Zello. It is Zello. What is, what is Zello? So, Zello is another one of these... Working I know, yeah, another one of these CB radio type apps. Another um, one. That's the only one I've ever one. seen. But anyway... Is it? Okay. No, yeah. well, we covered Haytel, no which is sound. sort of similar. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Um, with Haytel and a lot of those ones, you sort of buffer the message... Like you record the message and the message gets sent, then the other person hears it. Zello is the only one I know of that's actually live chat. So if, as soon as I start broadcasting, anyone listening um, can hear that, you know, live at the yeah. same time. So, so probably so, uh, assimilated to a CB radio. Very much like the old style CB radio. The audio quality is about equivalent to the old style CB radio. Oh, nice, as well. nice. But it is, it is really good because what you can yep. do is set up channels. So yep. you can go in there. Um, you can use it just with contacts. So talk directly one-on-one with contacts, of course. Right. But you can also set up a, a channel for your user. Like maybe it's a, like one of the example they give is your soccer team or um, like you could have an Aussie Tech Heads channel mm. where anyone who wanted to chat about what they saw on the show last, you know, after the show, for example, you could go on, anyone could join that room. Yep, or you could, have it, you could have it running through the show. You could have it on during the show. Maybe we should try that one night, you see could, how that works. Yeah, why not? And yeah. um, people could just sign into Zello. It's a free app, free to join, free to set up an account um, yeah. and join the channel. And then they can, you know, interject whenever they want to. <laughs> <laughs> now it's um, now join millions of people who use Zello instead of texting. So it is. It's uh, it looks it looks quite interesting. It looks really good. Yeah. If you ever, I don't know if you if you're as old as me and Garth here, and uh, you probably remember CB oh. radios, breaker breaker. Oh, well, the big old aerials <laughs> hanging off the back in front of cars. Oh, they all oh, the, they good? in the middle of your boot. They're whip aerial. <laughs> oh, yeah, yep. love it. Yep. Free live voice over any network or Wi-Fi connection. See who's available or busy. Replay messages later. Cross platform, free with no ads. Ads, won't spam your friends, let you delete your account, <laughs> and it's free. Freebie, freebie, freebie. Freebie, so freebie, freebie. Cross-platform, like they said, so you can get it for Android, and there's also a PC app. Sweet as. Um, well, no Mac app, though. Oh. A bit dirty there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you. That Otherwise, looks, it's all good. It looks something like we're going to have to have a look at. So what? So you can just let it load it up, leave it, uh, I mean, load it up in your phone, and then when, what, can someone just call you? Or do they just yes. break a breaker? So if you have the app, if you leave your status to available, someone can just 
hey, Glenn, hey, you know. And it'll just come straight and through. And it'll come straight through. You can set, obviously, you can set, well, you can take the app out of the app switcher and kill it entirely, or you can set your status to not available or busy. Right. Um, I think even if, it, even if, if you're a contact, yep. like this person's, you've accepted this person's into your contacts, they can send you a notif- like a push notification. Yeah, right. So like a text message will yeah, come yeah. through as an actual push notification on your phone, even if you haven't got the app running. Nice. Oh, how good is but that? But they have to be a, a contact to do that. You can't just have the randoms doing that. <laughs> how <laughs> good is that, TechEds? That's great. It, that's, is, that's, it is actually a pretty cool app. That's good. And I'm, I, I'm on top of it. Yeah, I use it. Yeah, yeah I'm, on, it. I'm on top of it. It's so <laughs> much so, I want to do it now. All right. <laughs> see you next week. Righto. See you, Glenn. Oh, well, that sounded like a fair, a fair app. Might have a, give that a shot, I think. Um, Kind, kind of reminds me of the old uh, talk show somewhat. Is that still going? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. I remember when I first started, I first, or I used talk it was pus. I don't know. Apparently <laughs> it worked in the US, but it didn't work here. It was. It, it was, did get better. Oh, good. <laughs> it was, I mean, um, it had to be, really. <laughs> well, I know. I remember Leo used to use it all the time. I'm thinking, how does he get this such better, uh, good quality, but I guess he was in the US, probably better speeds, better cables, closer to yeah. the server, all that sort of stuff. Plus he had a team of, en- 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 team of engineers too. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yes. Did um, anyone go and see him while he was in Sydney? No, apparently he's in Brisbane on this, this weekend, but um, no, I'm going to have to miss him. We're going through a bit of a kitchen renovation and it's just I'm going to go and try and crazy. find, if, if I can, I'm going to go and see him, but I don't like the chances. Yeah, I'm not sure where he is, but uh, where he's going to be. Uh, last I saw, he was looking for a place to hang out. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, anyway. he, he he went to the he did a hangout or a meet up or whatever you want to call it at the um, tweet up, yeah, the tweet up whatever at um, the rocks somewhere at the rocks. And then I don't know where he's doing it in Brisbane. I don't know if he's in Brisbane or the Gold Coast. I'm not sure. Brisbane. But then after that, I think he he gets on a boat. Right, he goes on a cruise. He's- yeah, he's coming days. up to Brisbane. He's going to be the hotel he's staying at. Actually, know where it is. It's opposite the Pino Cruise Terminal, so I might just go to the hotel. I know where I know where it is. Mm. Um, <laughs> just and, watch his Twitter feed because he always says I'll be here on this time at this date. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I would say there's only one re- reasonable bar, sort of, you know, hangouty place around there. So, I'd which hotels he at? I didn't. Can they get the cruise liners into Brisbane? Yeah, they got the they got the uh, they got a new terminal uh, designed especially for uh, the cruise liners. It's actually out. There is still the the original one, which is actually back down the river a bit in Hamilton. But they actually have a new one now at the port of Brisbane. It's actually a proper cruise ship terminal. Because uh, oh. originally, what was happening is when they couldn't get them to the the other dock, they were unloading them at the uh, the grain dock. At the, at the port. <laughs> that, would, that would have been... That's nice and classy. No. So that was good. So they actually built a... Uh, they actually built a, a proper uh, dock out there. <laughs> yeah, well done, Anna Bly. Fantastic. Uh, she yeah, loves it. It was great. Now, uh, Eric, you had another little story, didn't you, uh, about comics? Yes. Now, I'm not into comics very much at my age now, but I used to be. So if you've got young kids, mainly boys are into this... Um, DC Comics have put all their comics on the iBook store. So if you want to get them on the um, iPad, um, off you go. Yeah, so that, that so was... the titles mm. the titles include, um, what is it, Justice League, Batman, Superman, the, now, some Detective Comics, Action Comics, Batgirl, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, uh, American Vampire, among many others. I wonder if these, uh, they wouldn't be just scanned, would they? You think they'd be? No, no, they're proper graphic. They're proper graphics. Digital, digitally enhanced. Or... They would have. Yeah. They would have already had them all done. It would all be in vector graphics, and it would already. That's all right. Been done. Yeah. Just yeah. convert them to, to PDF or JPEG or whatever, what format whatever they're using. Mm, yeah. And because um, all the graphics are already done, because they don't do comics by hand anymore. No. No. But yeah. So it's um. So is it just the latest? Oh, so it's just the latest ones, or is it like like say? For, I think the whole I think their whole catalog is going to be on there eventually. Yeah, okay. They're starting right. to put, slowly put them on, and you know, obviously you'll pay for them. But I tell you what, it's going to be a lot of money for DC Comics, and good on them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. I like Superman. Bring it on. Now, uh, uh, Shane, did you have anything else? Where? Yeah, anything else? Uh, what else did I have? Oh, I'm going to do one of these out of left field kind of stories. Go for it. Uh, left field or left wing? 
No, no, left field. Field, yeah, no, field. No, good. No, continue. Not going to have any politics. <laughs> right, good. Uh, the US weather agency, NOAA, um, responds to demands to nuke hurricanes. Apparently, every time a major hurricane kind of goes anywhere near the US, like the one from last week, Sandy, um, they get multiple people asking questions about why can't they just nuke them. Um, what do you mean? American nuke? stupid. Oh, How thanks. can you nuke a freaking stupid? <laughs> you These nuke? are idiots. How can you nuke a hurricane? You know what? You know, they should nuke them. They, let's just see what happens. Let's nuke them and they go, oh, sorry about that. Now my child's got three heads. So, so Shane, is that like nuke as in, in, yeah, as in, in like put a bomb in the cloud? Oh, dear. Where this To all you Americans who requested that, this is one thing I have for you. <laughs> but this is, this is a news story from news.com. No, no, where was it? No, it's like, yeah, news.com. That's absolutely yeah, yeah. crazy. So Let's put, nuke also, the storm. It was also on the uh, news.com uh, technology section because I was reading it before as well. I'm like, what has this got to do about anything? That's rubbish. Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, I, I just hate to say this, but Americans, a lot of them are quite stupid. Oh, that is, yeah, well, that's, Americans, I mean, you know. That's crazy. <laughs> Didn't they see what happened in Nagasaki in 1944? Because <laughs> you know, you can imagine you put a put a whole heap of radioactive material in the middle of a gust of wind. I mean, that yeah. can't go badly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to end badly. It, it'll be fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, they saw what happened in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and that was an atom bomb. It wasn't even a nuclear bomb. No, nobody watched because it didn't happen in America. And nobody actually bothered to take notes. Yeah, so that's they, they're, right. They're feeling uh, a bit good left out. God, they want their own <laughs> nuclear disaster. <laughs> They, they Thanks just... for bringing that up, Shane. It just confirms my. It just confirms what I knew all along. I just needed the confirmation that yes, you are a bunch of dumb asses. Yeah. <laughs> so. so, all right. Big chunk of our audience. <laughs> <laughs> now, all, it's all, right. the, all seven listeners will send us nasty email. <laughs> now we've got um, yeah, like... Send it to uh, Eric at netchannel two dot com. Happy to answer your emails. <laughs> Now, um, um, uh, Barack Obama won the election as if, uh, if you've yes, been lived under yeah. a rock. Carry on. Move so, on. Next story. No, no, this is the. Uh, this Carry is, on, this Obama. Is my story. That's going to be a new, a new movie, Carry On a Obama. Music comp. Is that going to be like Love Thy Neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> be like Carry On Nurse. Hey, honky. <laughs> on, be like on the buses. <laughs> get that I'll have a <laughs> Oh, butler, get that bus out. Oh, yeah. oh butler. <laughs> Oh, now, four, four more years, coupled with a photo of Barack and Michelle Obama embraced in a hug, have become the yes, most... The that's mo- a setup. The most retweeted... Oh, well, he never took the photo. Well, uh, yeah. But, oh, gee, I, did, I wonder if he had photographers. <laughs> I wonder if they, that was a setup, because that's what she wasn't wearing that on uh, election night, I can tell you. Yeah, okay. She was wearing a black number. Yeah, but that was at the, through the day. But anyway, well, look, but who knows? Yeah, but you're probably right. But he hadn't won no. through today. I bet you that was at when he played his uh, his basketball game. Because doesn't he always play a basketball game before elections? Yeah, who knows? No, after, after. Oh, after, so no, after. The, okay. after the polls close. He tweeted the message. that's when he gets dressed. He, <laughs> <laughs> he tweeted the message at 4.16 GMT, and it has since been retweeted over half a million times. The same picture of Mr. and Mrs. Obama was also uploaded to Facebook, where it also broke records by becoming the most liked photo ever posted to the site. Really? And, and, and oh. yes, yes. And, and, after, and after all the hullabaloo and hullabaloo, uh, he, <laughs> he, went to, he went to the pub and it's his shout. So, yeah, uh, well, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so he obviously a, he's had like three by the time that photo I'll tell you what, he had a lot of clothes <laughs> changes that day, didn't he? <laughs> Does he actually wear sleeves he doesn't roll up? Oh, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, I don't know. That's to appeal that's to appeal to the wider actually, audience. Does he still use the uh the Blackberry? No, I didn't. Uh, I don't know. Just didn't Jobs use it on because, iPhone? He does. I thought because Jobs gave him an iPhone. Because, uh... <laughs> no, Jobs gave him an iPad. Oh, is that what it was? Right, right, I see. Now, has anyone else got any more stories? What what's this other yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a couple yeah. of quick ones. A yeah. couple of quick Apple ones. And these are Americans who aren't stupid. Um, Apple Senior Vice President Eddie Q joins the board of Ferrari. How's there you that? go. Eddie Q. See you, Eddie. Eddie Q, 
head of internet software and services, including Siri and Maps, now, that Scott Forstall has been given yeah, the bullet. That's why um, he's gone to Ferrari. <laughs> that's right. So they're going, oh, well, now that you're uh, doing something decent and, um, and wants his face is out of the question, would you like to join our board? Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, right. Apparently he's a, bit of a, he's a bit of a sports car buff. Yeah. And he says he's owned a Ferrari for five years. So, wow. there you go. He's had, well, hang on. He's had one Ferrari for five years. He's not trying real hard. No, no, no probably get a new one out of this deal, deal, <laughs> What I like about it is every time there's a boardman, he's got to fly to Italy. What a damn shame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. what a shame. So, <laughs> okay, though, Ferrari will send their jet for him. Yeah, that's well, true. Just use Steve-O's old I, jet. I, I wonder, do they go to, like, Ferrari World in Abu Dhabi to blow off steam occasionally? You know, like... Well, I'm sure they do a few things to blow off steam. that will be one of them. I'm sure they do a lot of things. And, may, and, and uh, sometimes that's... Uh, yeah, so there you and go. It's so it an Italian input, company, I suppose. Um, what, what's now, the difference? What's, short one. What's the difference? What's that? What's, what's the difference between a uh, Ferrari and a porcupine? You tell me. A porcupine has pricks on the outside. The okay. only time in history can laughter helped. That's right. Thank you. I'm glad you didn't hit the cricket button. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next story. All right. Short story. Pixar names its main building in honor of Steve Jobs. There's a picture of that there. The Pixar Times reports via 9 to 5 Mac that Pixar has recently named the main building in honor of Steve Jobs with Pixar employee tweeting a friend's photo showing the new name on the building. So the Steve Jobs building, it's now called. That's there the best I can do for that photo, sorry. But, um, yes. Oh, it's clear enough. Yeah, yeah. So there, yeah, Steve Good Jobs on. building. Good stuff. Good. Well what's, what's the difference? No, hang on. Let's just do a little, <laughs> hang on. Let's just do a little, hang on, wait, 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 wait. Steve Jobs famously invested $10 million to purchase Pixar from Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm in 1986. And then the animation studio was sold to Disney 20 years later for $7.4 billion. Wow. There you go. So, uh, so what's the difference between the Steve Jobs building and a porcupine? You tell me. <laughs> I think we all know the answer. No, so <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Come on. No, well, it, go, it goes with the same as the last one. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Has anyone, <laughs> anyone else got any gold? Any champagne? Yeah, I, champagne I got comedy? A, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, uh, a a few, sh well, two or three short stories here. I was just uh, curious to wonder if if Obama was still using his uh, BlackBerry because <laughs> there's a uh, Georgina Campbell. Uh, she decided to. She's a British mum, and she decided to write a book. Which okay, cool. Uh, it's fifty five thousand six hundred words long. It's called oh, I read Young this. Girls. It's called and what? She did the entire book on her BlackBerry. Oh, what's it? What's it called again? Yeah. Uh, the Kickdown Girls. Oh, okay, right. She's going to have sore uh, fingers. Is, she's probably from Newcastle or something. Um, she didn't, and she Manchester. Didn't, she didn't chisel <laughs> chisel her thumbs to a point to make it easier. Well, oh, it would have been it would have been no problem on the network because she would have been the only person on it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, you know, like okay, fine. I guess Blackberry's no good for anything else, so write a book on it, which we didn't find except. There's a the only review on the book on Amazon.co.uk says I could barely finish the first chapter. Appalling grammar, crudely written. It's almost in text speak. If if yeah. it reads as if well, this, and this, my child, this is, I don't this want to give one star, what, but I have to. <laughs> this is what it won't be making. Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so so um, apparently even books on BlackBerry suck. So I don't bother with yeah, a BlackBerry? Everything on BlackBerry is not good. <laughs> no, nah, it's not. Um, I wouldn't have one. I hate so one. Just got rid of it. Yeah. I've still got one kicking around the box here. So Landfill, Eric, or, or sold? Um, still got it floating around somewhere. All right. So it's holding up a book bookcase or something. Yeah, it's leveling. I'll use, I will use it as a weapon should a burglar <laughs> enter my house. I'll just throw it at him. You can see a ninja star. Yeah, that's right. And that's all it can do. It'll, it'll make a big dent in your skull, but that's about it. Now, um, look, um, yeah, sorry, Will. Keep going. I was going to say quickly, too, the uh, 
the world's first, well, speaking of nuclear before, the world's first nuclear aircraft carrier, the USS Enterprise, has been decommissioned. Just send that into the storm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, well, you could. They've just decommissioned it. Um, basically, it, they've shut down the, they're shutting it down the reactors and they're, they're pulling the fuel rods out. Uh, the USS Enterprise finishes its 25th and final deployment on Sunday when it returns uh, when it's returned to its port in Norfolk in Virginia. After more than 50 years of service that span the globe, uh, it'll never move under its own power again. It'll eventually be towed to Washington to be scrapped. Uh, the Enterprise is the Navy's second oldest ship after the USS Constitution. It's, been, it's participated in every major conflict the Cuban Missile Crisis in, since the Cuban Missile Crisis in 62, mm. and its airplanes targeted uh, insurgents in Afghanistan during the last deployment. So basically, yeah, it's it's in terms of uh, U.S. military history and war history in general, it's um, going to be sad in some respects to see it go. And what are they? Sorry, show you though, how did you say what they were doing with it? Sorry, Will, or are they, yeah, they, they going to sink it? Well, they say they're going to scrap it, but I I don't know if they'd scrap it. I mean, they may, I guess. What's the word they? Worth a fortune now. Yeah, what's the word they These use are, when they sink a boat? For diving, and they, they call it something. There's a special. They turn into an artificial reef. Yeah, but there's a special artificial word. Reef, yeah. No, there's a spe- scuttle. Yes, that's, scuttle. That's the yeah, one that's I'm it. looking for. Yeah, yeah they scuttle. scuttle it. Yeah, I would probably guess they will strip it. They'll get the bulk of it out. They'll take ninety percent of the stuff out of it, mm. and then they'll uh, and then they'll probably scuttle it because they love making you know steel. In, I mean, they drop you know a million tons a day of steel into the <laughs> into the ocean during the war. So you know. Why, why not continue the tradition? Now, um, yes, oh, don't tell the greenies. <laughs> what um, what class is that aircraft carrier? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't, doesn't actually, say. It doesn't say what it is. Uh, I thought it was Nimitz, just from like off the top of my head. But I actually, honestly, I haven't looked it up. I don't know. I know it's got the twin, the twin uh, decks. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah. Uh, and speaking of things being decommissioned. The shuttle Atlantis um, has its final 16-kilometer trek ahead of it. Um, it's basically begun its slow journey into retirement. It's sitting on top of a 76-wheeled platform for a 16-kilometer trek at, uh, it does say, I think it's uh, 3 kilometers an hour, 3.2 kilometers an hour maximum speed. Um, so it, probably it is, uh, it's ever traveled. what is it? It's, it doesn't say... It's uh, basically, yeah, it, 200 workers gathered in the early morning to see it off, basically. Um, that one's not going anywhere, though, is it? No, it's the one, it's the. It's in retirement now. Uh, it's made history. Um, and basically, the, I'm just trying to read quickly. Uh, I think it's staying at, um, at Kennedy, that one, because the others yeah, went to... The, it's. I'm just. I'm just trying to quickly read. It doesn't actually say where its final resting place is. It says it's going to space Kennedy Space Center, but I thought I read somewhere they are going to basically turn it into a uh, like you uh, used to do with military boats. They basically you could go walk through them and. They're and gonna. Whatever. They're gonna. Um, they're gonna throw it at the hurricane. That could be it. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna try and capture <laughs> capture the hurricane in the hull. Yeah, yeah, you want to have a guess how long this this aircraft carrier is? That U.S. Enterprise, U.S. Enterprise, three hundred and forty-two meters long. Oh, that's it's insane! Totally unbelievable. Yeah. That's three and a half football fields. Yeah, that's insane. That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's big. Well, the, it weighs uh, ninety-five thousand tons, and well, it that has. Makes the- that makes a space shuttle look light because it's only seventy-four thousand tons. There you go, and it has a crew. Of four and a half thousand people yeah, live on this boat. There we go. Uh, the next stop, meanwhile, Atlantis, one way round trip, still under design industrial park for public viewing. Tourist tickets run as high as $90 per ticket. There you go. So there you go. That's insane. Um, and just while we're talking about the space, I guess, uh, the Mars rover apparently takes uh, self. Uh, portrait selfies. Pictures. Take selfies. Yeah, it does. It's uh, it's up and about, and um, when every so often it sends back a picture of itself 
um, which, you know, everybody does. You know, That's right. Yeah. But, uh, That's uh, legal here now. That's called sexting. <laughs> That's right. But, how, uh, old is, how old is this rover? It's uh, under the age. Oh, yeah. The two-year-old? Um, <laughs> oh, oh, geez. <laughs> Oh, but uh, basically, the reason they do it, um, and actually that picture that Glenn's put up there, you can see the camera is on the, the right-hand side of that picture. Uh, it's it's right on the end of that arm. But basically, the reason they do it is so they can monitor uh, things like dust buildup on the solar panels, um, tread wear on the tyres, just basically general visual maintenance to make sure you know it doesn't explode before they're ready to... What are they going to do if there's a problem? Probably not a lot. <laughs> Send it to the pit stop. Send it in to Sandy. Send it yeah. to the Throw it at Sandy. Flat battery, we'll send Will up. That's right. So Will, on, uh, you're off to Mars this week. Double time. Uh, I want to call out fee for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Living away from home, uh, All right. Will, <laughs> any more? Any more? No, that was just a quick couple I had. All right. Uh, Shane, any more? Uh, let me have a look. All right, well, just while you're looking, Eric, have, are you finished? I'm done. All right. Yeah, no, I'm pretty much done. Oh, no, there's one more story, real quick one. Meet uh, Quirkit, the iPhone app that makes scanning QR codes pay off. Um, there's a new company that basically pays people anywhere from $1 to $50 to um, scan uh, those QR codes. Yeah, right. Depending on how many you do and all that kind of stuff. Um, just really quickly, I saw a figure here where they said that they'd paid, already paid like millions of dollars. I think, uh, well, you got, I, and I, has paid out more than half a million dollars to players around the world. Yeah, right. I know with all those online surveys and stuff like that, like, you know, they go, oh, we'll give you a dollar for each survey you do. And you think, oh, yeah, that could be worth something. But then at the dollar, it takes you it like does. 45 minutes to do a survey, though. No, no, it depends on the survey. Son tends to do them. Um, quite regularly and probably once a month we get a $50 BCF card or super cheap or so you know mm. for her you know spends a couple hours a day does a survey give 50 bucks at the end of the month it's, yeah, not, it's better not than nothing bad. well that's better than nothing yeah that's right all right now we just got um, a quick just, yeah sorry I was Will? gonna say just quickly too last week or last week I was on which would be two weeks ago um, I mentioned that uh, Kim.com is start starting his new site. It's going to be me.ga because um, it was mega, mega video. Uh, however, that's not going to happen. Uh, apparently, the South African communications minister, Blaise Love Movie, um, <laughs> <laughs> said that as soon as he registered the uh, .ga, which is obviously owned by South Africa, hmm. they... Uh, suspended his site because they want nothing to do with the legal activities. So, oh, just put yeah. in the British Virgin Islands, he'll be right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically, yeah, the, and the main reason that, as far as anybody can tell, the main reason he did it and they've never shut down another site is obviously it's public, but uh, he gets 60% of his income or 60% of the state's income, like the, his, his area, uh, is from US crude oil payments. Yeah, okay. So he doesn't want to lose that, obviously. Mm, no, no, that's right. So he's uh, kicked it in the nuts. Okay, now we've got an email through the week uh, from Miko. He's, he's listening since day, I don't know, just, it seems like about day one. Uh, but he's just written in about a uh, Nine News Melbourne, 6.17. Uh, news, at 6.17... <laughs> Is the time code uh, for yesterday's news. David Jones is set to launch. Now, this was breaking news. He, he just had to uh, uh, send it to me. David Jones is set to launch a new online shopping site that will be available from anywhere in Australia at any time of day or night. Well, there isn't that the whole point of online shopping? That's right. They don't have hours? That's right. He's what, got, a stupid, what a stupid byline. Yeah. Who wrote that article? I don't know. So, <laughs> he, goes, he goes on, this must have been a, a paid plant in Off2 Media Watch. Um, Eric will go, ap, ap, and he's challenged me to say this word, but Eric will go apoplectic <laughs> when he hears apoplectic. this. Apoplectic. <laughs> apoplectic. What a stupid thing to say. It's going to be open day or night I anywhere know. in Australia. You know, well, duh. You know what happens if you go to the uh, David Jones website? Yeah. yeah, they, they ignore you. <laughs> they ignore you. 
it brings up their shopping cart and said, would you like to sign in or create an account? I mean, really, you know, like they were ahead of the game. Yeah, they're crazy. Oh, God they're crazy. almighty. Well, like, you know, I thought, I thought the, the service thing was just a bit of a, a bit of a myth, but you, I've walked into the David Jones. They don't give it. They don't care. No. They really there's, don't there's care. There's three dogs. There's three dogs chasing a, a raccoon. That's about all that happens there. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> the only reason I like going into David Jones is because I like getting ignored. <laughs> I don't want anyone walk talking well, to me. Well, you could go to Bunnings, you could go to Supercharge, yeah, you could go peaceful. to Myers, you could go to pretty much anywhere, really. <laughs> well, that's right, they all ignore you. But I, I can be ignored in a civilised environment. Yeah, true. That's good. See, so don't, don't go to places like Masters because they actually try to help you. Um, you know, oh, forget so, that. How dare they? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, Actually, it's a, it's a JB Hi-Fi, they're getting horrible. They, they have customer service now. I can't um, go in there. We get so they've got the some grungy gothic music pumped right up. You go to buy your CD or your gift card or something, and a bird with eight thousand earrings through a freaking eyelid wants to talk to you. <laughs> you know the only problems I have with the JB stores up here. They've just opened three new ones in the old Wow buildings, and <laughs> wow. they put the counter at the back of the store. Yeah, so you walk through the whole shop. Yeah. So yeah. the first time I went in there, I grabbed. A flash drive, which was at the front of the shop, right near the front door, and went, hmm, okay, does that mean it's free? <laughs> I then had to walk five minutes down to the back of the shop, wait in line, and then walk back hey. past the flash card I just bought to exit oh, the shop. Think of the exercise, though. <laughs> hey? That's what they do. They're, they're, they're prote- stupid idea. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's how, I don't know, who knows. I, I like the floor they, floor tiling that they choose, the, the JB hi fis Nice floors. So, um, what's the floor tiling? <laughs> is that how exciting their stock is? Have floors. floors. Is, don't they just have dirt on the floor? It's cement. It's just the slab. That's all it is, isn't it? Are they, um, are they a company? Uh, this is a stupid question, but I know they're a company in their own right. But are they, are they owned by anybody or publicly listed? Okay. Mm. Was it JB? Well, it that used to be run by, by a bloke called Richard Utrich, who. Um, who founded and operated Rabbit Photo, if anyone remembers oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, sold yeah. that oh, yeah. sold it to Kodak for a squillion, um, had a big stake in JB Hi-Fi, ran that for about 10 years until he retired last year. And his brother was um, the head of um, news and current affairs at the ABC and Channel 9, Max Utrich, and that's yeah. who we bought our house off. Yeah, right. Oh, Max Utrich. Good work. Yeah, All right, so Max. There you go. Uh, there you go. On. All right. Well, I think that uh, brings us to the end of this week's show. So if you want to contact us, you can do the, the Twitter round. Uh, mine is at Aussie Tech Heads. Eric is Eric, at Eric Franco. Eric with a K. Will's at Mr. Tomkinson. And Shane is Shane1973. Shane with a Y. And uh, email if you, if you feel inspired. Glenn, Will, Eric or Shane at AussieTechHeads.com.au. So don't forget uh, the hosting. It's uh, it's up. It's live. It's going. Uh, we've got we've got we've got quite a, f- a number of accounts now. Haven't had any complaints. So it must all be going all right. So it's a uh, nice and stable. It's Australian. It's fast. So uh, AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash hosting. Get your teeth into that sucker. All right. So <laughs> thank you, Eric. Thanks, Shane, and thanks, Will. And uh, no worries. You're worries. welcome. We'll see no you worries. all, and thanks, Lounge, and obviously thank you, uh, listeners, and we'll see you all next week. It's bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah.